He does. Again, here's what it means for the conference as we take a look at the standings at this point. Maryland now alone atop the Big Ten, as I mentioned, a half game ahead of Wisconsin, which plays at Minnesota tomorrow on BTN. A three-way tie behind them between Northwestern, Purdue, and Michigan State. So those are the top five in the standings, John. I'm interested in who you think the five best teams are well, right I, now. And I know you love this exercise, particularly this yes. year when it's as jumbled as it is. Because it leads to so much, you know, fun, pleasant debate, right? right and I yeah. understand that. Especially I Twitter understand. exchanges. It's just so fun. warm yeah. and friendly. It's just fuzzy. <laughs> but I look at Wisconsin as still the elite team in this conference, mainly because of the consistency with which they play and the experience that they have. They have five guys that started last year in their starting lineup. So it's impossible not to look at this team and see how they've developed and say they're not the best team in this conference. Clearly start with Wisconsin. Number two, I go to Maryland, and Maryland has surprised the heck out of me. I mean, they really have, and I was wrong. I'll tell you, Maryland fans, I was wrong. I did not think and did not believe what Mark Turgeon was saying. He said, I love my team. I think we're going to be great. Can't wait for you guys to see this team. And part of me was like, yeah, it's media day, man. Everybody's really feeling good about their team. But he was 100% right. He had freshmen that he could trust to play in a starting lineup, freshmen that he could trust to play major minutes and, and get what he needed to get out of them, mainly because of the leadership he had, starting with Mello Trimble. So you see these guys really follow suit. And Mello has made big shots. And this team is there to win every single game. After that, I think you got to look at Purdue. Purdue right now is, is number three in the conference, but like we talked about Indiana, they have an incredibly high ceiling. And their ceiling is high because they mixed the lineup up a little bit to the point where Isaac Haas is coming off the bench, and they're going to wear teams down for 40 minutes. There's no let up. There's no, oh, Isaac Haas goes out, so now it softens things up. No. When you have Caleb Swanigan playing the five, good luck matching up against that. Then you bring Isaac Haas in off the bench either to spell Swanigan or to play them together it's impossible to match up, particularly with what they're able to do around the perimeter. So those are my top three. The fourth one, it's, it's a bit of a surprise, but I think they've earned it, and it's Northwestern. Northwestern is playing as good as anybody. They've got themselves in some really tight games earlier this year, and you look at Butler, you look at Notre Dame, two games that they really should have won, and I think today's Northwestern team would win at least one of those two games. They're at a point now where they seem to be comfortable in tight games, they're making big shots, and that's why they sit in the top five of this conference. The real question is, where do we go after this? Well, and let me ask you this. I mean, Minnesota beat Northwestern yep. in Evanston. Michigan State beat them reasonably handily. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest margin this year. Where do those two sit in comparison to the Wildcats? Why do you have them ahead? That's why they're in that five to who really knows spot. Right. I think Minnesota, after that tough week, I want to see how they bounce back. It's not that I don't buy it. I, I believe in that Minnesota team. I love the personnel. I think they've got great length and versatility. Amir Coffey is a dynamic player. Nate Mason's a great leader. So I think they have all the pieces. The issue is how do you bounce back from a lull? How do you bounce back from a bad week? For Michigan State is where's the consistency? We, we know what the pieces are, but what are they going to do in terms of what are your roles and how are you going to accept and thrive in that role? That's what I need to see from both of those teams for them to slide back up into that conversation of being in the top four or five teams in the conference. The potential certainly there. I just think with Law, Lindsey, McIntosh, and now Derek Pardon, who's back in the lineup and seems to be at full strength, that looks like a high-caliber team. And if you ask any coach in the conference, they'll tell you the same thing. Right. Fair to mention the Michigan State game was without Pardon, yes. and he has really played Huge well difference. since he returned. So Minnesota, Michigan State, who else would be in the discussion for it, that? That's football? where it gets crazy. You know, you look at the standings and you see Penn State's right there. Uh, but win some it, impressive games. And to me, that's a team that's going to still win some impressive games. So. Should they be in the top five conversation? Can't say yes at this point because the consistency issue with freshmen and particularly on the offensive end for Penn State, it's going to be a problem. But Penn State's that team that if you look down the road and if you're a, say they play Purdue and you're a Purdue fan and you see Penn State, you're like, God, Penn State, man. Right. Got that Penn State game. If you're an Indiana fan, you go, ah, oh, Penn State game, man. Well, everybody yeah. looks at they Penn almost, State. They almost yeah. learned that one the other but night. Everybody yeah. looks at Penn State as a real issue. So why don't we? And I think that's where I'm starting to look at this team and go, all right, if everybody else in the conference sees them as a threat, I think we have to start viewing them that way. They're not going to start winning games until they view themselves that way, though, too. And I think that's the issue. They've got to buy into how good they can be on the offensive end now that they're playing really high-level defense. I hear you. But, I mean, they've won some, you know, you beat Michigan State. That's you beat Minnesota. 
But you got to score points if you want to do it consistently. I hear you. I trust their defense and their right. effort and energy, but they, they got to start to execute to a point where they're scoring good points, getting good shots. All right, I'll say this to wrap up the conversation. We're going to have plenty more hoops talk as we continue here. Okay. It's obviously fluid, right? Yes. I mean, it could be dramatically different. Change next week. By, well, by tomorrow. Yes. I, I, I might make the point. And, and also, to your point about you look at Penn State and you say, man, you know, that's a good team, yeah. that's a challenge. That's what makes this that's league everybody intriguing. in the conference. Because that's yeah, everybody. It really is. It's, it's everybody true. that you look at on your schedule. Now, there's no team that you look at and say, there's no way we can beat them. Yes, absolutely. That's different. Yeah. I mean, there. I, I think we'd be lying to ourselves if we said there's the same power at yep. the top that there's been in some past years. But, man, the bottom has gotten dramatically. It's so much fun for us. It, it, it's fun when you're calling games because you don't <laughs> know what's going to happen. Let's